Welcome back to the Generational Rundown. You're probably all asking, why do I have wine in my hand and a hunk of cheese? Well, you tell I heard a study that if you eat cheese and red wine, I don't know if it's every day or once, I think it's once a week. I drink wine more than once a week. I'm just drinking a little. It can help improve memory and ultimately, you know, keep you away from the Alzheimer's or dementia. So that's why I've got this. But also we have a lot to talk about, a lot of tea we have to spill on the episode, the finale of the Vanderpump Rules. The so wine. why don't you start? Yes. So I love this hack, wine and a cube. So it's a wine, a glass of red wine specifically in a cube. Red wine, not white. Is and a not- cube of cheese. Yep, hunk of cheese. It's a hunk of cheese. Wow. Okay, I like this. I only like red wine. I feel white wine gives me headaches. Oh my so, god, I thought red wine gives people headaches. I feel the opposite, and I white in my teeth. I brush my teeth always, obviously, after I drink red wine, so I don't really notice any effects. I yeah, don't drink enough wine to you know yeah, care. But yeah, that's fun. Okay, Vanderpump Rules. It is the part three of the reunion. So we've done the finale. We've done part one and two. This is the third part. A little behind. Right. Obviously, this aired like last week, I think. But we're here to bring you the tea now. Wow, what a finale. We know that the cast for the first time ever in Bravo history watched the final episode together the last few minutes. And yes. so in real time, we saw Ariana find out what Lala and Sheena said to her, uh, said about her on that taping with Tom Sandoval. We hear Tom Sandoval cackle at the end and say, this is so good for me because Ariana walked away stood her ground and you see the reactions of Lala and Sheena being angry and Tom cackling about it. Now I will say since this aired, obviously all season long, I think the fandom has been on Ariana's side, calling Sheena and Lala mean girls, jealous, very upset with the reaction towards Ariana this season. They have now come out and said that they were talked to behind the scenes from producers that essentially if Ariana and Tom don't film together, there's no show and they will be canceled. So apparently mid season, midway through the season of filming, the producers came to Lala and Sheena and were like, look, we can't have a show if Tom and Ariana don't come together. So that means y'all can't buy your houses. Y'all can't provide for your kids if there's no show. So I guess what we didn't see was Ariana, was Lala and Sheena under the guise of they were going to lose their jobs. So is that the reason they really wanted and they were fighting so hard for them? Because that's partially now they're, that's what they're kind of coming out saying that this was where it was really stemming from. Okay. Because I have an issue with this whole situation because For me, Ariana said something that was so amazing. She's like, what did you want me to do? Be fake? She goes, we're we're supposed to be reality here. So by me saying nothing and walking away, that's saying something versus me staying and having nothing to say to Tom. Right. She was put in an uncomfortable situation. And so she wanted to leave the situation so that she didn't get into altercation with anybody. Would I now is hearing from you is that they were so focused on getting them reunited not because they truly cared but because they didn't want to leave their jobs lose their jobs that's terrible right that sounds really accurate to be honest but I do have a question going back to what you first started with when you said they were all watching it together are you telling me that I know Ariana spoke Kylie that she never watched it because she was too upset are you telling me that nobody is allowed to watch it during the season like didn't any of them see no normally everybody watches during the season but again this reunion is taped before the season ends so they are given a preview of all the episodes from the entire season to watch before the reunion however they were not given the last 15 minutes of the show this is the Uh, first time this has ever happened in history they were not given the last 15 minutes because andy wanted them to watch it together and that's okay, never happened normally they They've watch. watched it coming into the reunion. Okay. Because mm-hmm. I thought that was interesting because, you know, what, what it showed was that Ariana really, I mean, I took copious notes, but what I learned from all this is that Ariana really is the high, she takes the high road. She really was oh, yeah. disgusted and insulted and really, quite honestly, hurt by what she viewed. And what she viewed, if the viewers don't know, is that she had to watch Lala putting her down. She had to watch her ex-boyfriend making fun of her. I don't know so much, did Sheena say anything? I don't remember Sheena saying anything 
in the last 15 minutes other than, you know, I want her and you to come together. She also agreed with Lala. So she agreed with Lala. She's like, I'm on your side about this situation where Lala was like, I've never seen someone get cheated on and think they're God. And she thinks she's Beyonce. And Sheena agreed with her. And then she on, the, on that actual episode. Yes. And then also just the constant Sheena trying to get them together when Ariana's voice to Sheena multiple times, I am not your audience. And now Sheena's also said, oh, it was really hard for me because throughout the season, I really wanted to, Ariana to tell me like, do you think I'm being played by Tom Sandoval? Can you tell me if you think he's real or not? And she refused to help me figure that out. And I'm thinking to myself, don't you think him cheating on his girlfriend of 10 years for seven months shows you that yes, he's a player like and a liar and things yeah, like that. I, and why would she need Ariana to confirm that? And she's right. mad that Ariana didn't help her. I don't think that's helping her case. Now, that's she's thinking not- about herself as usual, which I can't stand. And she also, towards the end of the episode, she she showed her true colors. Lala was, as much as I was pissed at Lala, and we'll go back to that, Ariana was like playing both sides. Ariana says- No, Sheena was playing both sides. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I meant to say Sheena. Lala got up and started to leave and said, I can't believe you're being so fake. You complained so much about Ariana not following your music career, not making it more about what you're going through, not being- a good friend to you, um, not having time for your singing career because you're doing Dancing with the Stars. And Sheena kind of denied it. And so then that's the first time I saw Lala get mad at Sheena. Normally they're very united. Now, again, I didn't watch for years when they had their altercations, but in the most recent year, they've been united, Sheena and Lala. Mm -hmm. And Lala was pissed at Sheena for not standing up and saying, yes, I said some things about Ariana and this is really how I felt. I'm being transparent. She denied it. She, I think Sheena doesn't want to get anyone mad. Right. And she's not being truthful at well, all. She, she's a people pleaser. And it's. I think she's terrified of upsetting Lala because they raise their daughters together. They have homes in Palm Springs right. and in the Valley next to each other. And so when Ariana was sitting there crying, we thought that Sheena was going to go to her. And she went right to Lala to make sure Lala wasn't mad at her. And like as much as I love Sheena and Lala and I understand where they're coming from it was so hard to get on board with what they were saying this season and the reunion I just wanted resolution I wanted them to rally around Ariana and I just don't understand why this season they were so angry and they keep saying we're asking the questions we're trying to film a show but why can't the show be the girls rallying around Ariana and being the Spice Girls like she wanted why did the show have to revolve around pushing Tom Sandoval's apology and now Sheena and Tom don't have a relationship so I feel like she lost Ariana, but she did say, looking back, she does see Ariana's point of view now. So I'm, I really hope they can get back yeah. together. Yeah, yeah she yeah. said, looking well, back. Yeah, I mean, first of all, why don't they have a relationship? Why doesn't Sheena and Tom have a relationship? That's weird. He's what fake. happened? He's fake. He just never reached out. So when he was crying and everything, that was all fake. When he's crying, do so you think he's fake about Ariana too? Because oh, yeah. I feel bad when he was like, Ariana, you know me, you know me. You think that was all fake. I do. I mean, I don't know. The crying, he could just cry on a dime. Boy, can he do it. But I I just think that I, I do get what Lala and Sheena are saying 100%. And I want the show to continue. And I want new stories to be formed. I just want to like leave this in the past and move on. I don't want to keep hearing anyone talk about this season anymore because it was so difficult. And I just feel it was sad to see. Well, I feel like with Lala, I was really annoyed with her as well because Sheena makes it about herself. Oh, I've got my music career. Why does why don't you want to be, pay attention to me? You're too busy dancing with stars. And then Lala is jealous because nobody is treating Ariana the way she was treated. It's almost like she wants everyone to put Ariana down because when Lala's boyfriend cheated, fiance, whatever, they turned it around and made it about Lala and you should have known with the fancy cars and right. what you were doing. And so Lala is is putting herself in it and not being objective at all right. about what poor Ariana's going around feeling like. So yes. I feel like Lala, in one sense, tries to be the voice of reason, but then she shows her immaturity by getting upset that nobody's, how come nobody's treating Ariana the way she was treated when her breakup happened? Yes, that I know. It's really unsettling. It's unsettling. And then on her podcast, she went even further to say, 
I wanted them to show the flashback scene of Ariana talking badly about me so that the world doesn't forget that she was not always a girl's girl. Because I'm like, why do you want to tear a woman down who's who's rising in her career? But she said she's never allowed. Lala said, I never can get let go of the moments of things I've said in the past. So Ariana shouldn't be able to walk away from things she said that was hurtful in the past. That's I why they- like, I feel like this is why her and Sheena are so like united. They're both so immature in the way they're looking at the situation. Instead of looking at the situation and saying she's handling it with grace, she's being very realistic. She's being very authentic by being her true self and not giving in to Tom's apologies. Why can't the show be about other things? Why does it have to be about Ariana accepting his apology and accepting the girls being friends with him? Yeah. Like, it makes no sense to me. And Lala, I completely was against how she was treated. I thought she was treated terribly when her breakup happened. I totally understand where she's coming from. And right. I, I think that Randall was horrible and that she deserved a lot more support. But I don't think that that garners that we need Ariana to have no support or we need Ariana to film with Tom or say these things. And they keep saying, well, we have children. I have a child involved. But Ariana has to protect her mental health too, child or not. And she's right. had a lot of therapy and she talks a lot of therapy talk and she's so graceful in it. And she just is so eloquent in all of her responses. And she, Lala also said recently, like, look, I'm not a great friend. If you want a great friend, that's not me. I only care about my mom, my my brother and my kids. And like, I'm focused on she being a mom. That. She said that on her podcast. She said she's focused on being a mom. Therefore, she can't be a good friend to people. So if people expect her to be a best friend, look elsewhere. She's just an okay friend. She's not great, but she's not bad, which is funny because Sheena calls Lala her best friend. And Sheena's all about best friend, best friend, best friend. That's been her shtick forever. And so I don't know if Sheena's included in that or if she is excluded because they're raising their kids together. So she's more of like family. But I thought that was an interesting statement. I guess Lala just isn't in a place in her life where she really wants friends. Well, I think you raise a very interesting point. See, I wasn't part of the season where, because I only started watching it this year, when Lala had the whole Randall thing. But even putting that aside with me not even having been part of that, I feel that Sheena wants so much acceptance, like a little child wanting acceptance from her mother when it comes to her relationship with Lala. She wants to be like included in Lala's world and she's very intimidated by Lala. And it showed at the end of this season, it showed on this reunion where she was like going up to Lala when everybody was ending the show at the, at the finale and she wanted to make sure Lala was not mad at her. Right. Me, and then you've got Brock who's like, Honey, you did such a great job. Well, she, she just, said to Brock, oh, I think I should have said more. I don't think I defended Lala enough. And that's why she so was scared crying. and intimidated by Lala because she knows deep down Lala can be vicious. And can turn, on, turn her. on you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think I so. think, I don't think, I feel like if you look at Sheena, Lala, and Ariana, Ariana is true to herself, authentic, and she's not a hypocrite. So she screamed. So she wasn't the perfect girlfriend. So there weren't perfect things with the relationship. She's moving forward and she's handling it, like you said earlier, with grace. And everybody is making such a big shit about the fact that she's not, you know, forgiving him or she's having a hard time with her grief. Everybody grieves differently. Everybody's unique. Why is Lala and Sheena making it about everyone has to be like them? Ariana has to be like her. She has to emulate how she reacted in the moment, how she should be. No, what makes the show unique is everybody has to be individuals. If we're all robots, it's not going to be an interesting show. Right. And they're so afraid for their jobs from obviously from what you've said that they're being horrible. And if the show ends, I don't believe it's going to be because Ariana, it's going to be those two fools, the way they're interacting with one another. And you then look at the Tom and Tom, the other Tom, uh, you know, not Sandoval, Schwartz. Sure. He's very calm. He's very accepting. He loves everyone. He's happy. I didn't have any issue with him. Katie, I felt good with watching Katie. Again, she was backing Ariana. They were trying to make it about her getting not along, not getting along with Tom Sandoval, having issues with the whole Jack's story. To me, that's that's not, you don't need to tear her apart. Right. There's no real story there. And then James. To me, that was more of a story. The way James acts like a juvenile 
towards Tom Sandoval. That to me is more of a story. They act like asses, you know, with each other going at it. To me, they should be taking a page out of Ariana's book mm -hmm. and acting a little bit more resilient and rallying around as a friend group and trying to reunite with everyone right. instead of going after each other still. Yeah. It's it's bizarre. And why wasn't Allie on it, by the way? Well, Allie's not a real member. So her and Joe just came out because they're just you know, like friends of Allie's a um, girlfriend. And then okay. Joe is like a girlfriend, but I just, I want there to be another season and I'm hoping this break will do them good. And then we can just come back in the fall and start filming again. And we can see a whole new storyline, new things that are happening in their lives and hopefully a reconciliation because a reconciliation between Ariana, Lala and Sheena is possible. Unlike Ariana and Tom Sandoval, we can hope to see them reunite. So I'm excited. But don't you feel like Brock and Tom Schwartz are kind of like, just like the mediators and they're just kind of there in the background but they mediate when they need to like say something poignant or something that's really standing out for the for the group like other than that they're not bringing that much support I mean they're bringing support but they're not bringing I shouldn't say support they're not bringing, they're not bringing that much of a storyline they're they're more like Kind of like the secret code. Well, this season, but but Tom Schwartz has a girlfriend now. So hopefully we'll see her next season. That'll be something. He'll have a right. little bit more of a storyline. And Brock is there to support Sheena, but he's also doing his own thing. He's doing home renovations, production companies, I guess. So maybe he'll bring some more. What he Again, this is why we need a break up until fall. And they can start filming in the fall once people have things going for them. And we have, Lala will have had a baby. Brock will hopefully have had a different career. Sheena's going on tour with her band. So let's see what, what this fall brings. But they never they never go beyond and show like we talked about this before, Lala with her brother, Lala with her mother, Lala. Well, maybe we'll get longer storylines next season, but the thing is the focus was Ariana and Tom. So they cut most of the other scenes shorter because they wanted most of the the 45 minutes to an hour of the show to be focused around Tom and Ariana and maybe those scenes weren't interesting to the viewers so once who knows once Lala has another baby maybe we'll see more family with her and more Sheena and her family maybe they'll do a different thing with this show maybe they'll do more family oriented oriented who knows I They're feel like first. yeah they need a different storyline I mean how did you feel Katie performed during this last episode I felt like she handled it held her own really well yeah I felt that her and Ariana they were trying to break them apart and you know, earlier in the week and the yeah. week before and trying to make it seem like Katie's talking bad the way Sheena is. But I feel like Katie really has got Ariana's back. And they seem like they're the most stable of everybody in the show. Yep. I'm, I like their friendship. I like their dynamic. And I like how Katie kind of didn't let Lala bother her and didn't let the the trying to separate them get to her. She kind of just was like, whatever. I, I'm not going to fight with you. I'm not going to yell at you. It, I don't really care. And I'm glad. And she also said something really important. She said, you know, I understand why Lala is upset with me, but I don't understand the way she went about it. Yeah, you know, Ariana said Beyonce, that. Beyonce, yep, calling me Beyonce, calling me God. I'm not that. It was very hurtful. Yeah. And very overdramatic. And all it's showing is that Lala wants to be treated differently. And Sheena wants it. They're both, they both act like spoiled brats. Like, they're not getting their way. They're not, how come... It's almost like they're the younger sister. Why is Susie getting this and I'm not getting that? You know, that type of thing. Instead of really taking themselves out of the emotion and just looking at Ariana and how she's handling it and how they want to make this show go in a better direction and get off the cheating scandals and get more into life and different, like the housewives do. You know, you don't, it's not just about your relationship with men. There should be other things. It should be girl power. It should be, going to yoga class, taking a walk, going shopping, maybe something with, I don't know, something that comes up from childhood. I don't know, something that can ground them and bring them back to reality and not just be on this whirlwind of who's cheating with who. It gets old it's and old. it just gets really boring. Yeah. I mean, Sheena's storyline with the singing, that could be something interesting. But I mean, I'm tired of watching Sheena and Lala cry. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Moving forward, I, I think we should wipe the slate clean and have new storylines that have to do with their own lives. And we're just done. I think I think everyone's done with the Tom of it all. And I don't think they're going to continue. They're not continuing it. It's over now. 
And then what is this anger between James and Tom? Sandra? Well, because Tom, Raquel was James's fiance. So he had an affair oh. with his fiance. And they were like brothers. They were like best friends. Um, and to find out like a guy you viewed as your older brother was sleeping with your ex-fiance for seven months is crazy. Still making this woman so important. And she's just off doing her own thing, right? She changed her name. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to be on the show. There was one moment that they asked Ariana on this episode why Dan wasn't on. And she said for two reasons. One, he has no interest. And two, he wasn't getting paid. Yeah. So, you know, do you, do you foresee him coming back? If, if they even go with another Vanderpump, do you for see him coming back? Small or? capacity. I think it'll stay a small capacity. And I think that's how she wants it because she does not want the situation to ever happen again. Yeah. So I think small capacity. So you think she'll stay with this? Yeah, boy? they're in Fiji right now filming Love Island. Like she's not, she's a host and he went with her and they're snorkeling hmm. in the sea and they're having a vacation. They're, they're together. They're really together. That's great. Yeah but we shall see what she, happens well i think she's a stronger personality and i think he she needs to be with someone that's a little bit you know self con you know not self-conscious um, well, no but confident because they don't need to be the loudest in the room like tom had right. to overshadow and right and now you said tom has a new girlfriend and and they're going strong well, things are bad with them because Tom's friend has come out and said that since he started dating this girl, he started drinking again. He was sober ever since the affair. And now he's drinking a lot. The girl is drunk all during the day. And Tom has been canceling a lot of big meetings with people for opportunities and keeps saying he's sick every day. So people are very worried about him and his friends tried to have an intervention, but he didn't show up. Oh, so he's an alcoholic. Well, I don't know if he was ever an alcoholic, but I guess he stopped drinking because he was making poor decisions like the affair and all of that. And so now we started up again because of this girl, because she's young and she drinks. And apparently she has no job, allegedly. And she sleeps all day, parties all night, and just drinks a lot with Tom and slurs her words at two in the afternoon, accused one of Tom's female friends of wanting to sleep with him, which again, you're dating a guy who had an affair for seven months. So yeah, if you have a problem with trust, you probably shouldn't have dated him. Right. And and apparently she's a horrible influence and he needs an intervention, but he didn't show. So I don't know if there's any truth to that or if his friend is mad that they're not friends anymore, but I don't know. So maybe is that the reason he's not talking to Sheena? Maybe. His new girlfriend is influenced and he's drinking. Was he drinking, you're saying, with Rachel? He that, started yeah, he was never sober up until after the affair. He he got sober oh. after the affair because he's like, I made bad decisions and it was alcohol infused on some of it, so. And what's what's happened now with the house? I mean, they sold that They're house. going to court. They're going to court for it. And if it doesn't, they're going into mediation. And okay. if the mediation doesn't work, they might have to go to court, I think, in 2026 or something like that. So this could drag on for long. So I hope they get it figured out in mediation. I do, too. Yeah. Well, we will see. I'm hoping they'll come back in the fall, but yes. we'll see. Well, they would start filming in the fall. So we won't see it until maybe next spring. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I don't watch your podcast, but you'll have to keep me posted. I'll have to start watching your podcast. You watch your podcast, Lala's podcast, religiously. And Sheena, I listen to everybody. It's just to get the tea. Yeah, and Sheena has a different one, right? She's and not their own. Okay. Anybody else on the show have the podcast or no? Um, no. Katie, Katie has a podcast. Katie has. Oh. A okay. Yeah. What's hers about? Same thing. Just kind of recapping things. She has a co-host, and and they have different guests on, and just girl talk life. Way less Vanderpump talk than Sheena and Lala's. Okay. Well, it sounds good. I can't wait to see what the next season will bring, hopefully, if it's even going to continue. Yeah, we shall see. All right, let's move on to some hot topics. Okay, so I really basically was shocked to hear this story. Um, it was a story that kind of hit home to me because it was of a 57, I'm 57, what am I saying? 54-year-old woman who's three years younger than me, who is from Boy Meets World. Now, I, I didn't really watch, maybe I watched a few episodes. I, I remember the guy that was in it and she stepped back. She's not in acting anymore, but she has since announced with her husband of 16 years. And I believe she has grown children, two grown children, I think. No, she has, I think she has four grown children, something mm -hmm. like that. Trina I mean, McGee. Yes, we agree. How do you say her name? Trina. Trina McGree. Trina McGree. Yeah, Trina. She's got, let me look. Yes, she's got three kids that are grown. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And she wanted to have a baby. She had had her tubes tied. And she, I don't know if her husband or her are from Belize, but she went to Belize and started soaking up their traditions. Now, she is someone that's in menopause. And like I said, tied her tubes, which means you can't get pregnant. Apparently, she is now pregnant. She did this special elixir that she swears by, that she drank every day, that has been proven to help women get pregnant, even in their 50s. She is, I don't even know how many months pregnant. I don't you know, know how many months, but I, I didn't know about the tubes being tied. Are you sure? Yes, I'm oh, positive. Wow. I'm positive. I don't know. Did you watch the whole video? I watched the whole video mm -hmm. and her tubes have been tied. And that's very interesting. And I thought, well, maybe she reversed it. I don't think she reversed it. And she is pregnant and it's crazy. She's so excited and her husband's so excited. And she said, it's it, she would describe it three ways, miraculous, beautiful, and triumphant. And she said that she would be not opposed to even getting pregnant again. Now, this is someone that's 54 who said, you have to have a life plan because when you're older, you have to know that realistically, you're not going to be around when they're much, when, you know, when you're in your, there's a chance 20 years later, you may not be around. So you have to make adjustments. She's very nauseous. She's very tired, but she's very, very excited. I would be scared to death. I mean, I've heard people can get cancer when they have babies this late in life. What? Really? Breast cancer. I've heard of it. Yes. Can accelerate it because hormones. You oh. have a lot of hormones that are going on. Um, I don't know how her kids And she was in menopause it. already? Yeah, she was going in. She was already in menopause. How is this possible? I don't know. And she said it's not a voodoo, voodoo thing, but she said she's in an incredible, brilliant phase where she can look back and enjoy you know, this life that she's creating inside of her. And she feels everything is a miracle. Everything is amazing. And that she wouldn't trade anything for her experiences with her grown children, that she can be more present. She can be more focused, but she's not letting anybody hold the baby. She's going to be much more cautious. Yeah. Not much more chill. I wanted to know what you thought and what the viewers thought. I mean, because we are a podcast of generational raspies, you know, I personally don't agree with it. I think it's selfish. I think it's risky. I think it is a miracle. You know, she named, she did name people like Janet Jackson, Naomi Campbell, Cameron Diaz. I don't know their exact ages. And again, Cameron Diaz, I don't know if she really had the baby. I, no, but I think she had a surrogate, but I don't this know. This lady's having the baby. I personally think it's a it's amazing, but it's like when men have babies later, like in their seventies. You know, I mean, I don't know what. What you are know, the health? I, I get that. I get the health complications are really, really risky. Why? Yeah, the health complications. Longevity. Yeah, like being. I mean. People argue and they say there are some kids who don't have parents who have deadbeat parents. So yes. this baby's going to have two parents that love him or her. So no matter how long they're alive for, they're much luckier than some people who never have good parents or have young parents that are neglectful. So there's that side of it. But I do think it's harder to have kids when you're older because you're not going to be there for their whole life and they aren't going to get the same experiences as their older siblings. And I also think when you're older, yeah, you're wiser, but are you as active and as physically able to be a parent and run around with them? And I don't know. And also it's very risky for the mom to have to go through childbirth when you're in menopause. I don't understand that. And you have your tubes tied. Hopefully it's a risk. You, there's a high risk. So hopefully you can stay healthy, but you're obviously more prone to all these things like preeclampsia and bed rest and all that when you're in a geriatric pregnancy, they call it. And I think they start geriatric geriatric pregnancy is like in your late 30s so wow this, yeah this I is remember yeah I remember being oh my god people in their 40s are old to have kids mm -hmm. now 40s is no big deal 50s is ridiculous she did the I herbs know. I guess I guess she did the herbs that she said it was, it was all some natural. kind of elixir, elixir that's she said, natural remedies and what really got me is she's been with her husband since 1996 so I was like that's 16 years so I was like oh my right. god you must have had your older kids way earlier because yeah. that's I, I was like, you've been with your husband for 16 years. I thought this was like a new marriage and they haven't oh, had a kid. Oh, she has four kids. She has all the kids with him? 
No, I, with other men, with her ex-husband. That's what I thought. Right. But then I was, but in my mind, I was like, well, if you've been with this guy for 16 years, who did you have all the other kids with? So she must have had kids when she was very young or or early, yes. early 20s, something like and that. And you wonder all these years, were they trying? Were they just- she, were, she said they were trying and doing IVF and it wasn't working. Oh, okay. I missed that part. You know, and they're thinking of maybe, it's interesting, they're thinking of maybe living in Belize, but she did say something very interesting. She still doesn't want to give up having her birth in the States. Yeah more comfortable so as much as this is a miraculous thing she doesn't feel comfortable at giving birth there she wants to be able to be where the states have all the necessities if there's complications which that makes sense so she'll be in the states for her birth which by the way she's saying she wants to do without drugs natural birth not fun at all i can't imagine and um trust me when i say my second you know child olivia was on she was kind of born without drugs because i i actually almost had her in the house so it's oh. not fun not to be given that option. She's given the option, but she's choosing not to. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I find this is a miracle. I mean, I thought it was crazy when Janet Jackson, wasn't Janet Jackson like 50? Yeah. I thought that was old. This woman's 54. It's crazy. It's incredible, but it's crazy. So I just was thinking like on your end, how would you feel if you had a mom like me that was having a baby three years ago. Wouldn't that be weird? Yes, I think it would be kind of weird. I don't know how I'd, I think, yeah, I think that would be weird. <laughs> I don't know, because yeah. now I'm almost at the age where I could have a, well. You could, yeah. So, yeah, I just, I don't and, know. That's and I remember when you were 14, you are like, mom, have another baby. And I was like 44 and I'm like, nope, not doing it. Yeah. But I was like, you know, thinking, oh my gosh, that, that's possible. A lot of people have babies. But it's and nice to have all like, your kids going through the same stage stages of life. Like you have all your kids in your twenties now to have to start over there'd be such a big age difference. Your the siblings would be more like second parents. And so, the other thing, yeah. And the other thing you gotta think about is she'll never be able to see her grandchildren mm -hmm. like of these younger kids. Right. She's like a grandmother to these little kids. So the baby she's having with, she'll never see that baby grow up and have kids. Most likely. I mean, maybe she will. Maybe, but it's maybe she will. She's 54 it. and they have kids in their 20 years. She'll be in her seventies. So oh. she, could, she could possibly be a grandmother to this her daughter's kids but okay. it's just it's a long road yeah a long road. it's a long so, road. It's interesting I don't know how I would feel I guess also I don't live close so I wouldn't even really get to see the baby so it'd be better if you had had a baby when I was still around the yeah. state but at this point oh gosh it just would be crazy it's just it's, it's really that's going to be an adventure that's amazing but I wonder it just goes to show medically all those elixirs and hormones and how wow wow it's it's beyond general, regular standard medicine. Yeah. Well, it's it's funny. A lot of times I'll see, it, you're going to laugh because I'm a dog person, but it makes me think of a lot of times you see like an elderly person with a dog and you're like, oh my God, the dog is not as old as the elderly person. What is going to happen to this poor dog when that elderly person falls or dies or gets Alzheimer's or can't, you know, take care of it? And you think to yourself, that poor dog even if that dog is not a baby, that dog's like middle age, is going to be left to be put in a shelter unless somebody adopts this dog. And so it makes me think of kind of like parallel to the older person. But the siblings, the siblings will be able to step in and help out if yeah. anything, because now they're they're like second parents. That's true. That's but true. I, I feel like also don't think about the future. Just think about now. They're going to be parents now. They feel young. She looks young. Her husband's so cute. They're cute together. Hopefully, I mean, yeah. I'm sure they're going to have lots of years. And this is exciting for them because imagine being married 16 years that long to finally get your baby. With that person. Right, yeah. together. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Moving on to another love story. Uh, Jojo Siwa. And Madison, oh so you think you can dance. We've been recapping that show. We finished recapping it. Madison came in third place. Yeah. And now all of a sudden she's been spotted out, making out with Judge Jojo Siwa. That's <laughs> crazy. I'm the one that brought that to your attention. I was shocked to say the least. But I felt when I was watching the show, if you watch it back, I remember her like really enjoying watching Madison's performance like too much enjoying it. And so I'm not surprised to that extent, but what I am surprised is the lack of professionalism. You know, you're a host on this show and now you're going after somebody that was a contestant, like very fresh, not even like, you know, years later, like maybe a month later, maybe a few weeks later. 
So it's very surprising that JoJo is acting like that. And I would like to ask the viewers and wonder for myself, ask you if you think JoJo's a good fit. I personally don't think this is appropriate and I don't think she'd be a great fit coming back to the show. I really would like to see an older and wiser judge on So You Think Good Dance to have more of a synchronicity. Synch I'm not saying the word right, but synchronicity, whatever however you say it. Um, bec unity, because I feel that she really doesn't fit the puzzle in this dynamic of this show. Mm -hmm. And I find that whether this is just a ploy on the girl's part, I would tend to think that Jojo has nothing to gain from it. It's more Jojo being infatuated with Madison, but Madison jumping on the bandwagon of success, not doing it because she's really infatuated with Jojo. I don't even know if she's a lesbian or bisexual, to be honest. I think she is doing it strictly for the connection. That's my feel. For clout. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I just was very surprised by that. I just, I do feel like it's unprofessional. And I also, I think it's a bad look because Jojo's so young. People are going to blame that for this. And they're going to be like, oh, we need an older judge because this is unprofessional. And this is why Jojo can't be a judge because shenanigans like this are, is, are going to happen. And it just, if I was young and I was, and I am young, but if I was judging a show, I would try to be as professional as I could be because anything I did to like look immature would just make it worse. So she's giving people fire to fuel to add to the fire of like, we, this is so misconduct and we're going to blame your age and we're going to say you're too young. And then why are you going to be judging a show if you're going to behave like that? Right. It's, it's, to me, it's very crass and yeah, I, I don't, I don't feel, I almost think it was for publicity because the paparazzi got them kissing and we have, but also we haven't heard anything about it either. Like they don't post each other. So is this just a hookup? Is it that they are dating behind the scenes and they really like each other? But wow, your first season judging and this is, and then you have to go make out with a contestant. I mean, at least it's secure your spot for a few seasons before you go after the talent. Yeah. I feel like it's really showing her age. Yeah. Very young. Jojo Siwa. How old is Madison? I forgot how old she was. I think she's like in her twenties too, maybe like 20, maybe the same age or maybe a little older. I thought she might be a little older. Very shocking when I saw that. So yeah, I mean, they barely spoke on the show. I guess we didn't see the behind the scenes. I know. But I'm like, the judges never even interacted with the contestants as we saw. So when did this happen? Obviously, like I we know. said, you noticed Jojo was wowed by her dancing. So I'm sure they reached out to each other after the show. And or I think the party, the rap party. That's what I was going to say. Allison also had a party. Allison Olker provided yeah, a That party. might be the party. Might be the rap party. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, we have a little bit more of Hot Topics. Uh, we recorded them yesterday, so I'm going to pop them in here now. And we have a lot going on with J-Lo and Ben. So we're going to tell you all about that. So here we go, guys. Here's some more pop culture topics. Enjoy. So we want to try to just get some points across that have been popping up and that have been on our minds that we just want to bring to everyone's attention, starting with Jen and Ben. This has been a whirlwind for the viewers out there who don't know what's happening. Jennifer and Ben. Jen and Ben were together 20 some years ago. They were engaged. It didn't work out. They had kids. They were married to other people. They got back together and it was like, oh my God, love exists. Like this gives hope to all those relationships out there. Like maybe one day we would get back together, but also that she found her Prince Charming and it was very sweet that it was the guy she was first engaged to. And it was a real love story. And yes, he always looks angry and mad, but I think that's just his face. And I think he really loves Jen and they're a great couple. They had a huge wedding. Now, the rumors have been circulating for a while that first Jen is super narcissistic and very full of herself. People are trolling her with her Vanity Fair interview and just that she's a workaholic and that she kind of puts work before everything else and she just wants more and more and more and it's never enough, um, allegedly. And then now all of a sudden, over the past month, we've been seeing all these rumors that her and Ben are on the outs and that there's talks of divorce and that... Ben feels like marrying her was a fever dream. And if he could plead temporary insanity during a divorce, he would. And all these crazy rumors, like she was looking at a house and people were like, oh my gosh, she's house shopping because they're, they're broken up. And she was like, no, it was an investment property, which is kind of feels like an excuse. 
And then they weren't spotted together for weeks and weeks and weeks, but she was working. And then now yesterday they were spotted together, even though Jen wasn't at his daughter's graduation, she was walking hand in hand with Ben to the daughter's graduation party. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so they seem fine. On his phone, there was a photo that said Mrs. Affleck or Jen Affleck with her photo. So they're in communication. I don't know, because I feel like when there's smoke, there's fire. But then at the same time, A, I don't want it to be true because I feel like it would have been such a waste if after all of that, everything to get back together to just break up again would be wild. But then That's I guess- fifth divorce, right? Fifth divorce. divorce. I mean, I thought personally- that it was her that wanted it. But from what I read, it was him that was seeking the separation and that was tired of her ways and wanted to focus on his children. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I read. Yeah, uh, he it's was interesting that- you read that because now she was supposed to go on tour this summer, but we already had rumors that the ticket sales weren't doing well. And so she had to cancel some venues and now she's canceled the tour the tour completely it's not happening it's completely canceled and yep. she said she was devastated and heartbroken and sick over it but that she needs to focus on her family and her relationships and i and her friends and family relationships and honestly this is my theory just pure speculation i feel like okay this all makes sense now jen has always been a self-proclaimed workaholic perfectionist she goes hard i think once again she was putting her work before her marriage and the family life. And Ben maybe gave her an ultimatum. Like if you go on tour, I won't be here when you get back. And she, for the first time ever in her life has chosen to put her relationship and her family before her career, which maybe is the reason why her past relationships didn't work out because it was just like career first, career first, which is something Cardi B said happened to her relationship. Like her career comes first. And I feel like this is the first time in Jen's life. She's like, okay, you know, you know what? I don't want to lose this marriage. I'm going to fight for it this time. And she canceled the tour. That's what I really think happened. Well, what do you think about her never being satisfied and always never being happy? Like she's a workaholic and she wants more and more and more. Do you think that she's not satisfied in her marriage as well? Because I don't know, do they get too comfortable? I mean, it was a whirlwind princess story, right? Where, you know, they, they just, they came together after all these years, they each had relationships, children, engagements, breakups and then to get back together after all these years and be so connected so quickly and then married so quickly because generally with her relationships she's not ne- normally ready to get married that quickly she right. you know tends to stay for a while and have longer engagements so i'm wondering you know is she just so in love with him and realizing that they need counseling and she needs to stop putting her career first or nitpicking. I don't know. They never, ever mention his past substance abuse, which I think is amazing, which I would hope to mean that he's been in recovery all these years and it's never been an issue. But I'm always like waiting for that to be the forefront of his relationships. And it never happens. Thank God. What What are your thoughts about the Jen and Ben with her expectations and never being satisfied Or maybe she's not satisfied in her own situation with her career that she needs to just keep pushing. And it has nothing to do with what she feels for Ben. That's what I think. I think she's, I've watched the documentary of her performing at the Super Bowl and when I was getting my nails done and it was actually a really good documentary like a few months ago. I really enjoyed it. And it gave me a perspective that she is Work comes first. She loves what she does and she's never satisfied. She always wants the next big tour, the next big stage, the next album. And I just think it has nothing to do with Ben, but that's who she is. And I think maybe it's caused some issues between them. And now she needs to step back from that, which I'm proud of her for canceling the tour to focus on the marriage, if that's what it is, because I think she's never done that before. And she's in a chapter of her life where she wants to fight for this love. And maybe they were just disconnected because of all the work that they both were doing separately. But they've been living separate for many months. That's very extreme. But is that true? I don't even know if that's true. Okay. But why don't she just come and shoot it down? Sometimes I wonder, why not just say it's not true? Right, right. And they said they haven't been spotted since May, middle of May. And I guess he's on very good terms with his ex-wife, with Jennifer Garner, right? And she's got a new love Mm -hmm. interest as well. So I don't know. I mean, I was very surprised to hear... If again, if this is true, that it was him 
seeking the separation, not her. Mm -hmm. So especially because it didn't really go hand in hand with if she ne if she's never satisfied, that led me to think that she was the one that wanted to live separate. And, you know, again, I don't know what this means for their relationship going forward, but gosh, I mean, he's only been married, what, once? Yes, but I don't think she's not satisfied in relationships. I, I mean it in the terms of that she always wants more for the career, which is totally understandable. She's a go-getter. I just right. think she's had some crappy relationships like Alex Rodriguez cheated and there was a scandal and I think she would have stayed with him forever if he didn't do that I thought they were a fantastic couple yeah I did too but I didn't realize so you think that she would have she would have definitely stayed with him well she only ended it because of that scandal so yeah. she wasn't dissatisfied with that relationship okay yeah. but wasn't that a long engagement didn't they have a long engagement? They did. They did. But maybe yeah. that's the thing. She had a long engagement. And then by the time she got with Ben, she's like, why would I waste a time? We were engaged once before. Why waste more time? So from what I read today, that tour is being canceled, right? Completely. Completely. Which I was shocked. Yeah. I thought she was only, you know, canceling a leg of it, but then going to sort of tweak it a little. But she's just showing up for the relationship I guess now which yeah is, now it's completely done which is kind of good but again we don't even know why but I think I know why yeah yeah all right moving on wow Mandy Moore is pregnant with her third child I'm so excited for her I didn't I love my favorite thing is when you don't even know celebrities are trying or that they want to have another baby and then it just pops up on your Instagram feed one day that's the best and also, especially she's having a girl after two boys. I had the opposite, the two girls and then the boy. So it's really exciting that the, the boys are going to have a little sister. It's just gone amazingly well for her. So I didn't, I just happened to see that a few minutes before we jumped on here, but I want to read the article later to see when she's due. Yeah. Because she started late. She was married to someone else for a while and it was kind of an abusive relationship. She did confirm. And then she fell in love with this other performer and I don't know if she's really performing herself. At one point, she was supposed to go on tour, but then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. And she was supposed to be at our playhouse. So, I mean, do you know if she's sticking more to the acting? I tend to think that's what she's doing right now, putting her singing on hold. Yeah, I think it's a mix of both. I remember she was in the studio creating music, but I find it funny because I think she might be back to more acting now. Whereas I know Jessica Simpson's creating music again. I think there was, I think Kelly Clarkson was working on new music. So I just, oh, Kate Hudson started singing and now she has a big music career. Oh, She's starting oh. up. So I kind of love to see all these actors transition or these singers get back into the studio. So I really hope Mandy Moore does it again because I feel like it's such an era of Jessica Simpson, Mandy Moore, Kate Hudson, like the 2000 icons coming back and performing and doing music and stuff. It's so fun. Kate Hudson is Goldie Hawn's daughter, right? Yeah, and she's singing now. That is so funny. Is her new husband or boyfriend a singer? Because I know one of her relationships, her ex-relationship, he was in the band. I don't think so, but I think that she has always wanted to sing. And the thing about her is I think she's so talented and she gets a lot of, okay, see, she gets a lot of crap. People are like, you were just Goldie Hawn's daughter. This is nepotism. And now you think you can have a singing career because there were rumors a while ago, just back in the day that she's super a diva and demands a lot on sets and is hard to work with, which I don't see that. I don't know, but I feel like she's such a lovely person in interviews. And I like, I think she's a great singer and I love so many movies she's in. So I don't know why she gets so much hate. I got to listen to her singing. I always get her confused with that other actress who was in um, Gossip Girl. Oh, Blake Lively? Blake Lively. I don't know why I get those two women very confused, but yeah, I'll have to take a look. What's the name of her album or group to oh, now you're putting me on the spot she's a she's singing but I think she has a band behind her and she has one single out she's done a lot of covers but now okay. I think she put out a single uh, I'd love to go see her sing I think she's I think she's great yeah and speaking of singing did you hear that Priscilla Presley just turned 79 oh my gosh no wow and her granddaughter who I love because I saw her in Daisy Jones what, Jones in the six mm -hmm. uh, was with by her side I still can't believe the mom died, you know? know, Riley Kehoe. But yeah, I, I still can't believe she died. It, it's it's oh, so God. crazy to think about. It, it's just so sad, uh, Lisa Marie. But I think Riley's a great actress and she's in a fight for Graceland for the estate. Oh. 
Yeah, to keep it in the family and for not to sell. So she's in the middle of that. But I'm glad her and well, well her she, and Priscilla had a fight back when Lisa oh. Marie first died over money and I think over Graceland. Oh, yes. But I'm happy they've now reunited, it seems like, because you said they so, celebrated. So was that fight gone or is that was it strictly between her and her grandmother? Or was it other people involved? Maybe more people in the estate and things like that. I feel like they made up because I saw them on a red carpet a little bit ago. So I think the feud has ended. Or maybe okay. it was blown out of proportion, but she definitely wants to keep that. And I think she should keep Graceland. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's funny because if you look at Priscilla Presley, she almost seems like she would be her mother. Yeah. You forget that Lisa Marie, she was so young when she had uh, Riley Keough that, you know, you, you kind of feel like Priscilla's the mom, yes. not the grandma. Right. And, and people don't realize that Priscilla also has a son. We always think about, you know, Lisa Marie, but she also had a son. With her other husband, with her second yeah, husband. Was that her husband or a boyfriend? Second husband, boyfriend. Yeah, she had another I child. They broke up. I think her and him broke up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or did he die? I don't remember. I don't know, but they're not together. They're not together. Yeah. So I always forget she has a son. Yeah. No, I was going to say she's not motherless. You know, it's sad that she doesn't have Lisa Marie, but she does have her son. Yeah. Which a lot of people don't realize, which I didn't even realize since to last childless, year. Childless, you mean? She's not childless. Right. And well, what's news? baby news, speaking of Haley Bieber, Haley Bieber, we didn't talk about that. I don't think Haley Bieber and Justin Bieber are having a baby. And that was shocking because she posted that she was pregnant. And then it came out. She was six months pregnant. I'm like, you hit it for six months. I know that's crazy. Yeah. Like how did she get away with that? And, you know, there were rumors that she was having twins. Oh. I think it's kind of cool the way they did the, it's kind of like eerie. Like it was like a renewal that was Other, a rap vow renewal. But yet pregnancy reveal, right? Mm -hmm. That was pretty cool. Um, and there was somebody else that I wanted to talk about. Oh, Vanessa Hutchins. Yes. She's and adorable. And Ashley Tisdale. Are they both pregnant with their yes, second? They're both pregnant. And they're both well, Vanessa's first, Ashley's second. Definitely. And they're both from high school musical. And they were best friends back in the day. So I find and that so both, cute. Yeah, they're both having girls, right? Or yes. Not. Well, actually. I have no idea. Now that you say that, did you hear Vanessa's having a girl? Oh, I don't remember. What does Ashley have? I don't, she has a girl right now. Maybe it's, oh, I don't know now. I don't know if they don't announced know. it. But I thought that was awesome. And I'm so happy for Vanessa Hutchins. She's one of my favorite actresses. She's got a huge belly and her husband just looks so, so happy. Cool. And they just, they're adorable. Let's see. Yeah, they didn't announce what type of baby either of them are having, if it was a girl or a boy. But I know, I think they look so cute, Vanessa and her husband, and they're so in love. And I'm so happy, Cole. And he's a basketball player, I think. And oh. yeah, they're so cute. I'm happy. This is great yeah. for her. He looks like he'd be like a musician, right? He looks yeah, like that's, he kind of yeah. has that look. Oh, wait, he's a baseball player. That's what it is, baseball. Okay. And is he, he's professional? Yeah, professional baseball. And they live in California? Mm -hmm. it's so cute because she's she's tiny like us so it's funny to see like a tiny person be pregnant and she is her stomach, stomach, yeah, stomach. Stomach. looks like she's ready to pop and I love her and all those like what was it not Hallmark movies oh or... those those princess switch movies those Christmas princess movies yes but what happened to Zac Efron like where the heck is he is he in Australia still he was like dating that woman and who was a waitress and then they broke up is he still in Australia no, and I just think he's had plastic surgery done to his face, oh. and it's weird. A lot of people say he looks way too Botox and chiseled, uh, but he's, yeah, he's single. I think he's just, like, living life. It's funny, because him and Vanessa were together for so long, and it's just, they, it's just sad. I mean, it's not sad, but it's funny how they all drifted apart, and, like, Vanessa. They, were, they weren't romantic. Yeah, they dated for years. Are you kidding? They did? They were, like, the it couple, yes. Within the show, they were together. Yes, and in real life for years. Oh my gosh. You know what? I don't know if I knew that. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They, they were together. So after High School Musical, they had a relationship for many years. Mm -hmm. It wasn't on again, off again. It was, they were just together. Oh, maybe it was on again, off again. But then she went to Austin Butler. And let's see. When did they break up? They started dating when they were, they dated five years. Okay. It was five years, but it felt really long because they were 17 yeah. when they started dating. So I felt like it was like looking up to them because they were like older teenagers. And I was like, oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. And they didn't stay in touch after that. 
I don't, I think they went their separate ways. Same with Ashley. And then what happened with Austin Butler and Vanessa Hutchins? Like she just parted they ways. They broke up and uh, Austin is actually cousins with Ashley Tisdale and they're oh very gosh. close. So I think maybe that's what kind of drifted Ashley and Vanessa's friendship because they uh -huh. were thick as thieves too back in the day. But now they're back. Now they're back. They're not really close. No. Oh, they're not. Mm -mm. Anybody else from that show? What about the guy that was the dancer? Oh, I don't know. It's too much. These are just like the headliner ones. But it's so funny that all those people who were the teenagers I looked up to and I watched, they're all now having kids, which is so I know. And you were in that. Remember when we were living in Rockland? You and Olivia yes. were in And it was in a musical, not the actual play, but a, a musical yeah. version. It was awesome. Remember they were all in this together? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I, I feel like so long ago. That. that was awesome. That's awesome. And then what else? Anybody else? Tell us this cute story you found. I want to talk about, oh they're not God. celebrities, but they're cute as heck. Tell yeah, us about this dog. Crazy. Yeah, we love to do feel good stories and me being an animal advocate. I love animals, especially dogs. Um, I saw the cutest thing online. I don't know which town it was in, but this woman bought it. I, I believe it was a pure breed, long haired chihuahua. And she introduced the chihuahua a few years back to her mailman and the mailman started developing a relationship with the chihuahua that every time he would drive by they have the door open the chihuahua would run out and then he'd pick the chihuahua up and give it a hug oh. or a kiss and they've been doing this for years and now there's like i don't know if you saw it there was like 400 times like they're trying to get to a certain number to achieve and I kept thinking like, oh my gosh, I hope it's not a busy street because, you know, every time the, ch the chihuahua is so small, he runs, she runs down the steps really quick. And then the mailman picks her up and she recognizes the truck, even though they change trucks, it's a different type of van and they've developed such a special bond. And I was thinking, oh my God, this dog and him had a different life. And they said that in the video, they said, perhaps so they both lived a different life and they're reunited the way she has such a fondness. I mean, he doesn't even give her biscuits. She's just so excited to see him. It's adorable. That is so sweet. How much are they trying to achieve a certain amount of hugs? Yeah, a certain amount. I think they've got like I think they've got like over four hundred and something, and they're trying to get to this number by the end of the year. It's hysterical. That is so sweet. I mean, I don't know if she goes out in snow rain, but I don't know where it's located. I got to look at the article. I watched the video, and it was just the sweetest story about you know a feel good story. Like a lot of times you hear that they, you know, these dogs, they get rescued uh, by mailmen, by UPS workers, they have a relationship. But just the fact that this guy's been coming to their house for many years and they just enjoy that interaction. It's just the cutest. Yeah. It is that the dog was smart enough to recognize that it's the mailman. It's not like the chihuahua is getting treats or anything. She yeah. just yeah. wants to have that connection. With the and mailman. the fact that you said, it, I feel that's totally true about the past lives. Totally believe in past lives. And I feel that's so adorable that maybe their souls were together in another life and you found each other again, this time in the form of a chihuahua and a human. That's really sweet. And I'm going to stay on the story because I want to see them achieve that. I know. It's a really happy story. That's a, that's a happy note to end on. It really is. It is. Yep. All right, guys, that's all we have today. We hope you enjoyed our recap of the reunion and some pop culture news, and we'll see you next time. Bye.